for more great videos and learning tutorials, or to download the exercises that go with these videos, please visit our website at www.createthenet.com. That was www.createthenet.com. Well, welcome back to our video series on CSS layouts. In this series, we're going to be going ahead and working with a three-column layout. Basically, this is the this is the layout that we're going to look at. In our last video, we added the HTML structure to make this page, and I've gone ahead and I've added some content in, and you can see that here. We've got a header up the top, a top navigation area, a left navigation area, and then a content area. The content area is going to contain both the left nav, the content and the right header, or the right um, heading area. And then we're also going to have space for a footer. And again, you can see from this example where it is that we're going with this design. Very useful, very functional design that you can do a lot with. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into Dreamweaver now. And you'll go ahead and see I've added some content for the header. And again, my top nav, just some unordered lists and my content wrapper which wraps the left nav the content div that I've added some content into as well as that right hand sidebar and then we have the footer down here at the bottom so let's go ahead now and let's look at the CSS that's going to build this file so I'm going to go ahead and select my CSS and you remember before I defined my div names or my IDs prior to building my source code, and that way Dreamweaver picked those up for me. Let's begin by formatting the wrapper. The first thing I want to do with the wrapper is I want to set the width of this overall design, and I'm going to say the width of this design is going to be 800 pixels wide. And I'll go ahead and save that. And I'm also going to go ahead and set the margin for this document. And the margin, I want to be zero pixels top and bottom, but I want it to be centered between the left and the right, so I'm going to select Auto for the margin property. And again, I'll save it, and I'm going to jump back into my browser here and go back into my design. And when I refresh this, you're going to see that the design became smaller. It's now wrapped into an 800 pixel um, space and you're going to see it centered on the page with the margins automatically evening out. So I'm going to come back in here to Dreamweaver now and let's go ahead and do a few other things. I'm going to go into the header area and I'm going to go ahead and set the background color for my header. You remember I was using that blue color and I could use my color wheel here or pick a color but the color that I want I actually remember the number so I'm gonna go ahead and type in C1, D1, F1 real easy blue color to remember I'll save it and click over here and there you see I've got that blue background applied to my header section well now there's no margin space at all on my header so I can't really see what's going on here and there's also no padding so I want to expand this out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this has 25 pixels of padding all the way around the header. Now when I click, you're going to see that that blue color fills the entire space and it becomes more rectangular in shape because I added the, um, I added the padding. You could add more padding on the top and less on the bottom if you wanted the title to be more down, but that's basically what we're going to do. The next thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and um, format this left hand, I'm sorry, this top navigation area. So I'm in the top nav div here and the only thing we're going to do with the top nav div is make sure that the width is set, we're going to make sure that the background color is set, and we're going to make sure that the, this floats all the way over to the left. So I'm going to go ahead and say width equals, and I could do 100%, but in this case I'm just going to do 800 pixels. I'll make it the same as up there. And then I'm going to go ahead, and again, I'm going to say I want this to float as far to the left as possible. 
and that will take care of some problems we're going to have with the banner and the content div shoving up and covering up our, um, our top navigation um, div. And then I want to set the background color to, what background color did I use in the example? Let's go ahead and take a look at our sample. And you'll see I have that, like, a, like a dark gray background there. So I'm going to go ahead and make the background color of this a dark gray. Save that. Click over here and you'll see the changes that were made. The width has been set. It's floating to the left so I can see it. And the background color has been set to that color. And we're obviously not through with this. So let's go ahead and do a few more things. First thing I want to do is I want to format the UL tag that's going to be inside of this that will contain all of my list items or all of the, the links for the navigation. And to do on that, the only thing that I want to do is make sure I zero out the margins and the padding so I don't have any a browser accidentally put some uh, information on there. And again, that's the div name followed by the tag you wish it to apply to. So top nav UL will affect any UL tags like this one that's within the top nav div. And if you're unfamiliar with the concept of what a descendant selector is, which is what this is, I'd recommend you take a look at our video on CSS descending selectors. The next thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and remove the bullet from these menu items. You can still see I've got that black bullet there. So I'm going to go ahead and do top nav And then I'm going to go ahead and we're modifying the LIs that are inside of, or the list items that are inside of that unordered list. So I'm going to go ahead and the property that I'm going to do is list style type. Oops. And then I'm going to select none as the property for that. And I'll go ahead and close that off. And again, this affects the container. The UL is the container. The LI are the individual items. If I had put list style type none up here, it wouldn't affect these LI items. I'm going to go ahead and click over here, and you'll see those bullets have disappeared. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and make this a lighter gray. Just for right now, you'll see those bullets have been taken off. If I was to have removed that style just really quickly, you'll see they come back. Let's go ahead and put that back in there. And now we're back where we want to be. Now, I want to do one other thing with these list items. Right now, every individual list item is on its own line. But I don't want that. I want them to be listed in line. So I'm going to go ahead and, again, these affect the individual list items. So I'm going to go ahead and do display. Instead of block, which is the default for what's showing up now, I'm going to select inline. And I'll close that style. When I click over here, you're going to see those links now are horizontal as opposed to vertical. So we've completed that. Now, the next thing is to actually form the buttons themselves that we're going to go ahead and click on. So I'm going to go ahead and do top nav, UL, LI, and then this is the A tag. And I'm going to go ahead and put several properties in there. The first property that I'm going to go ahead and put in is the display property. And the display property for the individual links is going to be in a block format. And I'm also going to put some padding around the buttons so that they appear to be square in shape. So I'm going to put 5 pixels top and bottom and 10 pixels left and right for padding. And then I'm going to go ahead and close off that style. We have some more property value statements to put in here. When I click over here in my live view, you're going to see some things have changed. We'll go ahead and complete this in the next video. Also, if you're interested in seeing the high definition 1280 by 720 videos, please go to createthenet.com. 
when we upload these videos to video sharing services, they always shrink the video size down and decrease the quality so they come out a little bit fuzzy. If you go to the uh, website, you can see the full resolution versions of these videos.